Hello and welcome to today's episode. Today we are going to talk about some tech news and some international news like always. We will talk about GPT-4 O event. We will talk about Google Gemini event. We will briefly touch on Microsoft's AI event, what are they doing? Microsoft build, Microsoft Surface event. Uh, we will talk about some gaming updates, especially around Xbox. We'll also talk about deaths of Iranian ministers. We'll talk about assassination attempt on Robert Fitzer. We'll talk about what else? We'll talk about Israel and Ukraine a little bit. Let's get started with the first topic. GPT-4 event of OpenAI. OpenAI announced GPT-4O, its latest LLM. The O in the GPT-4O stands for Omni. It can handle speech and video, not just text. It accepts as input any combination of text, audio and image and generates a co any combination of text, audio and image outputs. It can respond to audio inputs in as little as 232 milliseconds with an average of 320 milliseconds, which is similar to human response time in a conversation. It matches GPT-4 Turbo performance in on text in English and code with significant improvement on text in non-English languages. GPT-4O comes with enhanced performance in around 50 languages. During the demo, GPT-4O showed it could understand users' emotions. When it noticed a user was stressed, it offered advice to help them relax. GPT-4O is two times faster, half the price, and has five times higher rate limit compared to GPT-4 Turbo. GPT-4O brings significant improvements for free ChatGPT users. When using GPT-4O, ChatGPT free users will now have access to features such as GPT-4 intelligence, get response from both the model and the web. Previously, it was just the model for the free version. Analyze data and create charts. Chat about photos you take. Upload files for assistance, summarizing, writing or analyzing. It supports Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive for files importing and it, you can also directly upload files. Discover and use GPTs and the GPT store. Build a more helpful experience with memory. There will be a limit on number of messages that free users can send with GPT-4 depending on usage and demand. When the, the limit is reached, chat GPT will automatically switch to GPT 3.5 so users can continue their conversation. For both free and paid users, OpenAI is also launching a new ChatGPT desktop app for macOS. It is a native desktop app with a simple keyboard shortcut, option plus space. You can instantly ask ChatGPT a question. You can also take and discuss screenshots directly in the app. You can now have a voice conversations. You can have now have voice conversations with ChatGPT directly from your computer, starting with voice mode that has been available in ChatGPT at launch. With GPT-4O's new voice and video capabilities coming in future, OpenAI is rolling out the macOS app to Plus users and will make it more broadly available in the coming weeks. It will also launch a Windows version later this year. So if you've watched this keynote, you'll notice that most of these features have been demonstrated by Google at some point, either in Google Assistant or in Gemini. But Google cherry picked results and the interactions and put them together in their demos instead of a live demo where people could have seen how it actually works. I think OpenAI beat them here with more consistent real world results. The, op the Google Demos were a little cherry picked from here and there. They'll edit out bad responses or error alerts or whatever. OpenAI was more direct with live demo. Air quotes live demo. OpenAI is more consistent. It appears to be. There are rumors that Apple is in talks with OpenAI 
and Google because it wants new AI features on its devices. Apple's internal state of AI is not good, consider Siri as an example. The new ChatGPT desktop app will come on macOS first and later on Microsoft Windows, despite Microsoft investing billions in OpenAI. It is probably deliberate because Microsoft wants to push its own co-pilot. OpenAI, the company, uses Apple devices and Google Workspace instead of Microsoft Windows and Microsoft Office. Most of Silicon Valley uses Apple devices and Google Workspace. That's the same with OpenAI. We found that out when uh, Sam Altman was fired from OpenAI on Google Meet. Most of ChatGPT users are also Apple users, especially paid ones. That's true. OpenAI in its demos were primarily using Apple devices and ChatGPT app coming first to macOS suggests that Apple and OpenAI have signed the deal for Apple's AI. If this is true, it will be announced in Apple's upcoming Worldwide Developers Conference, WWDC. Ilya Sartskevar left OpenAI. Ilya Sartskevar was considered to be like the genius at OpenAI. Him and Andre Karpathy, I think that's his name, these two, and they both have left OpenAI. Ilya was in a way responsible for firing of Sam Altman in last year and now he's left OpenAI. Most of OpenAI's super alignment team, the safety team has left OpenAI. That means OpenAI is prioritizing progress over safety. Whatever stance you have, whether you are effective accelerationist or effective altruist, whether you're prioritizing progress or or you're prioritizing safety. That's that's what happened here. OpenAI will prioritize progress. It seems to be. Scarlett Johansson versus OpenAI. OpenAI showed a new voice named Sky during the demo. It sounds similar to Scarlett Johansson's voice character in a movie called Her. This demo was eerily similar to that AI in that movie called Her. Sam Altman also tweeted after the demo, her. Scarlett Johansson released a statement in which she disclosed OpenAI approached her in September 2023 about using her voice and she declined after much considerations. She was forced to hire legal counsel after she heard the demo. OpenAI shared in a blog post. We worked with industry-leading casting and directing professionals to narrow down over 400 submissions before selecting the five voices. We believe that AI voices should not deliberately mimic a celebrity's distinctive voice. Sky's voice is not an imitation of Scarlett Johansson, but belongs to a different professional actress using her own natural speaking voice. To protect their privacy, we cannot share the names of our voice talents. And OpenAI has paused Sky voice in their products. It all depends on whether they trained the Sky voice on Scarlett Johansson's voice or whether they actually hired a voice actress that has a similar voice to Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson's voice is a bit rare. She has a, she has a raspy voice and there are some women who are like that. I think I think there's a comedian. She appeared on Joe Rogan's podcast. And she looks kind of like Scarlett Johansson, but also sounds kind of like Scarlett Johansson. You you can assume that Well you can assume that this voice is rare, but it's not specific to Scarlett Johansson. It's not uh, she her her voice is not like Morgan Freeman's voice. It's hard to mimic Morgan Freeman's voice. And even if if it's possible, question is, did OpenAI train on Scarlett Johansson's voice? Did they hire or did they hire a, an actress that was mimicking Scarlett Johansson's voice? If one of these scenarios are true, then Scarlett Johansson has a case. But if the voice actress was using her own natural speaking voice, 
as OpenAI is claiming, then Scarlett Johansson has no case. Next one, Google I.O. Let me take a break a little bit. I just realized I'm drinking cold water during recording. You should not do that <laughs> at all. But okay, whatever. Next topic is Google I.O. Google held annual developers conference Google I.O. It was about, you guessed it, AI. Google Photos will get Ask Photos feature. Google CEO talked about license plate number and Google Photos figured out correct number based on location data and how many times it has appeared in photos. He also asked photos to show swimming of a little child, how it has progressed and Google Photos showed a bunch of different photos of that child swimming as a memory of sorts, like showed the oldest to the latest photos and videos. I think it was prime. I think it was photos, not videos as a way of showing progress of that child's swimming skills. I think that's cool. He also said Google Photos now receives 6 billion uploads daily since launch of Google Photos. That's insane. Google also showed its circle to search feature which launched on Samsung Galaxy S24 and Pixel 8, 4, 8 Pro. Circle to search allows users to circle something on their phone and Google will search it. Circle to search now also helps with maths and physics problems. Google will also get a web search apart from all searches from Google search. Web search brings back more classic search technology that, that is more relevant and accurate. It just posts links like Google used to be back in early 2000s. This can fix recent problems that search has, which puts a lot of ads, irrelevant content and spam. But unfortunately, ads, some ads are still there and spam is still there. Just all the irrelevant content like the questions feature, the images that appeared in all search in Google search or videos that appear in all Google search web search will just give you links. Google also showed off its travel planner. What would take people days or weeks can be done by Google in seconds. Google creates a custom travel plan based on flights and hotel bookings. It also uses email, maps, etc. This planner will be available in Gemini Advanced in coming months. This, this was, I think, the, one of the most, one of the weirdest part of parts of Google demo. Who asked for this? I don't know. The photos feature, the circle to search is useful. Some features that I'm going to talk about next, some demos, they're, they're also useful. But who asked for travel planner? I don't know. Maybe they have some data. They definitely have some data that we, we don't have access to. Maybe people are using Google to plan the traveling a lot and maybe I'm out of touch with the travel industry. Anyway, they showed this off. Google Lens can also use video and audio for your questions instead of just photos taken by Lens. This is about Google's multimodal push for AI. Gemini will use video captions of the video you're playing on your Android to summarize video. It can already summarize web pages on your screen. It can also do PDFs, but only with the paid version. Android will also get scam detection feature based on Gemini Nano. It is an opt-in feature that monitors your calls that might ask for your PIN or password to detect spam. Google also released another LLM, Gemini 1.5 Flash. Google also released Vio, its video generator AI or OpenAI Sora alternative. These video generators can save people time by replacing stock footages. 
why look up for f- stock footage on internet when you can just type what kind of stock footage you want and it will generate it for you gemini nano will also be inside google chrome google Wo- gemini is also coming to google workspace as a sidebar google also demonstrated its project astra this ai is multimodal you can talk type draw on the screen use its camera use the camera of your device it also showed thick never seen before glasses with a transparent heads up display maybe the google glasses are back most of these announcements were coming soon or coming later why well it's a that's what google io is they just show a bunch of stuff and they just say it's coming this year it's coming that but they should have showed some features that were releasing on that day on the day of google io there was there's almost nothing like that everything is coming soon or it's coming later compare that to open ai and open ai has dominated the headlines they just ate google's lunch in this demo presentation competition i guess you can say and this io usually the google io this is the annual event it's usually for developers but and also tech enthusiasts but this google io felt like it was more for the shareholders and google was showing it felt google felt desperate that it was showing how it's an ai company rather than just doing ai properly gemini still does not give you accurate information google's ai neither does the search generated experiment experience i think it was called what is search generated experience is if you type something if google ai thinks that query is important it will generate an ai generated summary in google search right below the google search box and up and below that search sum below that summary ai generated summary it will show you search results why why is that and also some someone posted a screenshot that went viral they were asking advice how to pass kidney stones and the google search generative experience i think it's called the the ai summary that appears below google search it showed it told that user that they should drink their own urine to pass kidney stones quickly <laughs> i think that the search generative experience is google's answer to perplexity ai perplexity ai is a ai chatbot it uses bunch of different cha- uh, llm chatbots for the free version i think it uses gpt 3.5 and a paid version you can use gpt 4 turbo you can use llama you can use claude there are bunch of different ais available it perplexity advertises itself as an answering engine or a, or a new take for search engine it will show you almost always show you factual information it will give you that factual accurate information almost always not all the time not all the time but almost always it will give you factual information ba- based on what query you type and it will also link sources from which they have pulled up that information uh, i use perplexity ai and i think and i think it was pointed out by people at all in podcast that the search generative experience is google's answer to perplexity here's what google should do if if they want to beat perplexity i think they are feeling threatened by chat gpt by bing copilot and by perplexity i think these are three main threats google is facing there are also other chatbots but i think these are the three main threats that google is facing and i think google's 
सर्च जेनरेटिव एक्सपीरियंस एंड इज इट्स आंसर टू पब्लिकसिटी है बट सर्च जेनरेटिव एक्सपीरियंस इज नॉट एक्यूरेट एट ऑल कंपेयर टू पब्लिकसिटी इट्स टेरिबल सो दे नीड टू इम्प्रूव एक्यूरेसी दे नीड टू रिड्यूस हेल्यूसिनेशन वे ए आई जस्ट मेक्स अप इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इज हेल्यूसिनेशन ए आई विल स्क्रेप ऑल द डेटा एंड जस्ट मेक अप इंफॉर्मेशन रैंडमली ऑन इट्स ओन एंड गूगल्स जेमिनी डज दैट आर लॉट इट नीड्स टू रिड्यूस हेल्यूसिनेशन इट ऑल्सो नीड्स टू करेक्ट इट्स बायसिस at least it should there's no such thing and as unbiased but it should at least give an impression that it is unbiased that is major problem with google with the especially this was exposed in their image generation with the whole black and asian nazis and whatever the images they were generating black american founders very weird stuff and also you don't need search generative experience at all if i want to type that i'll just type that in gemini so what they need to do first they need to bring auto complete and suggestions to google gemini prompts when you're typing information on google you will see five six different links while you're typing related to your query you can just click on one of those and it will just search it for you they also need they need to bring that feature to gemini when you're typing a prompt the prompt will be auto completed based on some suggestions you can just click on the suggestion and prompt will be complete and it will just show you that su- that information based on that auto completed prompt they need to bring collections feature so perplexity ai allows you to categorize or sort your history of prompts into different collections let's say you search something about i don't know history let's say some you search something about geography about technology you can create categories called history geography technology and you can put your past prompts in those collections that i think google needs to bring that feature to gemini and also his his another suggestion when you are searching something on google search especially on your computer the right side of the page is empty so maybe don't put the search generative exper- experience the search generated summaries between search results and the search box maybe put that on the right side of the screen on desktop and just give the links right below the search box like google always used to do before this ai trend got started my chat gpt it is what it, well it is what it is move on to the next stop shall we future of gaming industry there's debate going on excuse me there's there's a lot of debate going on about the future of gaming microsoft sp- spent 7 to 8 billion dollars to acquire bethesda a gaming company and recently they spent 68.7 billion dollars to ac- acquire activision blizzard king which is another gaming company they make candy crush and they also make call of duty and there are bunch of other games after they acquired all all these companies they have shut down some of their american studios gaming these game companies they are also have their own studios for g- making games and they have shut down some of the american studios and a japanese one they have announced their xbox exclusive games 
coming to more platform so if you well if you look at the console market there's xbox and there's playstation there's nintendo switch and they all have their own exclusive game exclusive games that's how they can differentiate themselves there are some games you can only play on playstation there are some games you can play only on xbox and some on only on nintendo switch that's why you you choose one console over another and microsoft has decided to make almost all of their games exclusive games multi platform so there's less incentive to buy xbox people are speculating that playstation 5 has so outsold xbox by 5 to 1 so for every xbox sold by microsoft sony has sold five playstations and some information came out about also about sony that only half of their playstation users are on the latest playstation 5 half of them are still on the playstation 4 which was the previous console and this is probably true also true for xbox probably microsoft also recently revealed a new studio in poland elsewhere entertainment which is uh which is very strange elsewhere entertainment and this studio is is in poland they shut down american and japanese studios they are making their games available everywhere and the new studio is called elsewhere is this is this is this is the name intentional or is this a glitch in the simulation i don't know uh so this is xbox square enix is also another gaming company they make games some of their games are on exclusively on playstation so square enix also also announced some layoffs and in their recent report financial quarterly financial report they said that playstation exclusivity has hurt their profits that means they are also going multi platform i think it was late last year or in january of this year sony also shut down some of their studios and did layoffs but for some reason they didn't get all the xbox is going down kind of like all kind of, all the negative pr that xbox got xbox is going down xbox is finished they didn't get that all that bad pr makes sense they didn't spend 68.7 billion dollars for a gaming studio but they did some layoffs they shut down their studios they also bringing some of their games on play, pc so you can buy an xbox and only play some xbox exclusive games and you will miss out on playstation exclusive games or you can buy a playstation and you will miss out on xbox exclusive games or you can buy a powerful windows computer and you can play xbox and playstation games as well as pc games on your computer you get what i'm saying i i think the future is pc the future of gaming is pc if a console was to survive it will be very limited you will be you will be naive let's just say to buy a console at this point and not buy a gum- gaming computer if you want all of the games just buy a gaming computer also also be- let's talk about some bad pr on xbox 
I think this was overblown when a company is acquired by a bigger company there are usually some layoffs and there's some consolidation that's that's just business i didn't make the rules and also playstation did some layoffs there are layoffs in hollywood right now the whole entertainment industry is going down especially in especially in united states but all over the world but especially in united states look at what's happened in Di- to disney and warner brothers in last 2 3 years the financials are looking terrible for all of hollywood not not just disney and warner brothers but all of hollywood and the film making industry the entertainment industry is going down not not it will not shut down completely there will be some players but there are going to be a lot of layoffs so i think this was overblown but that being said pc seems to be the future of gaming of high end gaming for the low end gaming low end as in casual gaming gaming games that don't require a lot of performance you have phones you have nintendo switch and also a lot of handhelds are popping off handheld pcs basically like nintendo switch but with power of a gaming pc it's not as powerful as gaming pc of course but you can play high end computer games and console games in a small console like steam deck or rog ally from asus in a handheld form factor that's why they are called handheld pcs that also seems to be the future also my personal observation since the xbox 1 in 2012 13 xbox has been has is making terrible decisions but when google launched google stadia suddenly xbox started making all of the right decisions but after google stadia was shut down i think in 2022 or 23 and the activision blizzard king acquisition by microsoft was completed in late 23 early 2024 xbox is appears to be back to the xbox one era where they're making terrible decisions so when google was a potential threat microsoft did all the right things they they made all the right decisions and as soon as that threat was gone they back to being terrible again just my observation it's weird i, I was also considering getting an xbox if if i had, if i was going to buy a console i probably would have gone for xbox not that i was considering an xbox I was considering the Xbox Game Pass, the subscription service that allows you to play 100 games per month on your Xbox or or on your computer. I was considering that, but I'm not going to consider it anymore. I'll just stick to PC if I want to play games again. I used to be a gamer when I was in school. I stopped gaming. Maybe I'll go back at some point. I'm not going back to gaming currently, but if I go- decide to go back to gaming, it probably will be PC. I'm not going to touch consoles. Let's do some Israel updates. Israel is attacking Rafah in southern part of Gaza. Everyone was telling Israel not to go into Rafah, especially the Biden administration. But Israel is attacking Rafah now. The International Court of Justice is holding hearings to discuss a request by South Africa seeking additional emergency measures over Israel's offensive on Rafah, 
a city in southern Gaza where more than 1 million displaced Palestinians sought shelter from Israel's war. The demand by South Africa is a part of a case it lodged against Israel accusing it of violating genocide convention in Gaza. Israel den denies the accusation. The International Criminal Court ICC, has put out arrest warrants for both members of Israeli government and Hamas, members of Hamas, for committing war crimes. I think this is fair. What happened on 7th of October 2023 in Israel and what Israel did in retaliation, both of those things are wrong. So that's that. Slovakian PM Robert Fico shot. It it's spelled Fico F I C O. It it's pronounced Fico. This is correct. This report or this news is collected primarily from TASS, the Russian state agency, because the information in in Western media was lacking. Slovakia's Prime Minister Robert Fitso was shot. Fitso, 59, was shot after a cabinet meeting in the city of Handalova, Handilova, in Western Slovakia. Eyewitnesses told the Plus Jaden Den newspaper they heard four or five shots. The shooter has been detained and identified. GOJ Television described the shooter as a 71 year old man. Juraj Sintula. J U R A J C I N T U L A. A 71 year old resident of the Slovak town of Levis was charged with attempted murder. I'm pronouncing this name and the towns wrong, but whatever. I remember seeing on Twitter slash X that the wife of the shooter is Ukrainian. The shooter may face 25 years of li to life imprisonment, the TA3 TV channel reported on Thursday. He was shot in the chest, stomach and limb in an assassination attempt. He is in very serious condition, a helicopter ambulance rushed him to hospital. Reuters reported that Fitzo was conscious when he arrived at the hospital and, and his condition was stabilized. His life is said to be out of danger but we don't know. This is. This was Europe's first assassination attempt on a politician in the past 38 years after Olaf Palme, then Swedish PM, was shot in 1986 in Stockholm, Sweden. EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said the incident undermines European diplomacy. Viktor Orban, Hungarian Prime Minister, said he was shocked by the heinous attack. Polish PM Donald Tusk expressed support to his Slovak counterpart. Belarusian Foreign Ministry also strongly condemned the attack. Russian government also condemned the attack. Indian PM Modi has condemned the attack and expressed solidarity with the people of so Slovakia. WHO Chief Tedros has also condemned the attack. The assassination attempt can be blamed only on a political madman brainwashed by Slovakia's opposition media. By and large, this attack was directed against Fitzo-led government and its policy of friendly relations with Russia, said Jan Kar Karnogorsky, former Prime Minister of Slovakia. Like I said, this is probably because of the friendly relations of, with Russia, but it could also be because he rejected the WHO pandemic treaty. People are speculating if this was a lone shooter incident brainwashed by the opposition media or whether there was some greater conspiracy a conspiracy of greater involvement maybe NATO was behind this or what people are speculating I don't know what is what is the correct answer in this Iranian president died in a helicopter crash on 19th May a helicopter carrying Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi crashed near the city of Varsekwan, near the Iranian-Azerbaijani border. 
out of three helicopters traveling, two helicopters with top Iranian officials reached their destination safely. The one that crashed had President Raisi and Iranian Foreign Minister Amir Abdul Abdullahanian. Helicopter crashed due to heavy fog and terrain made it harder to reach site. Russia sent 50 people for search and rescue. A Turkish drone discovered the crash site and shared the coordinates of the presumed crash site with Iranian authorities. The next day, death of President Raisi and Iranian FM was announced. Many countries are offering condolences and lower flag in solidarity. Ayatollah Khomeini announced a period of five days for mourning of the death of the president. Iran's first vice president, Mohammad Mokbar, will be the interim president and a presidential election must be held within 50 days, Iranian cabinet said in a statement on Telegram, I think. People are speculating whether this was an accident or an assassination. The crash happened in Azerbaijan, a country that Iran hasn't had best relations with. But I think this was most likely an accident. The helicopter is from what, 1970s? Iran c cannot get le test helicopter because after the Iranian revolution of 1979, US has put sanctions on Iran. The helicopter is old and is maintained by Iran. But still, this is an old helicopter and the helicopter was traveling through a heavy fog. But people are speculating whether this was an assassination attack because of what happened between Israel and Iran recently. But I think this was most likely an accident. I think this, this was... This post was going viral on X slash Twitter. Many Twitter accounts are posting this. Over the past two weeks, May 13th, Turkish President Erdogan holds emergency meeting following warning of possible, possible military coup. May 15th, assassination attempt on Slovak PM Robert Fico. May 16th, citizen arrested for threatening to assassinate Serbian President Vucic. May 19th, Serbi Saudi Arabia's King Salman hospitalized for second time in four weeks. May 19, helicopter crashed involving Iranian President Raisi and Foreign Minister Amir Abdullahanian. Many Twitter accounts are posting this. Maybe this is coincidence, maybe assassination attempts are on the table or back on the table. It was only a matter of time, I think, if, if these are assassination attempts. Uh, there was also a coup recently in Congo. The military attempted a coup. The military was backed by US, people are saying. And the coup was crushed by the existing government. So that's that. What else? Also, Ukrainian president. Volodymyr Zelensky is now cons is now illegitimate after May 20th because of the Ukrainian constitution. The Ukrainian con constitution gave extra 90 days for a martial law and that 90 day term expired on May 20th. So according to Ukrainian constitution, President Zelensky is now illegitimate. The Russians are surely going to take advantage of this. Maybe they'll just say, we are not going to negotiate with this guy. Maybe they'll put out arrest warrant or an assassination order on the Ukrainian president. We don't know. Maybe Ukraine will just extend martial law further. Maybe. But as of, but his term was set to expire on 20th of May. We'll see what happens next. So that's that's it for today's episode. We covered AI and assassinations primarily. Possible assassinations. We'll see what happens. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the Microsoft Surface event. 
they showed a bunch of features the Qual- qualcomm snapdragon processors are, are coming to windows and windows on arm is a real thing which means a lot of battery life gains and silent laptops they'll not make a lot of fan noise they'll also not heat up as much as current windows laptops do basically what apple did with their m series processors in 2020 and windows basically that windows is catching up after 4 years yikes but it's good will get better life battery life on laptops you don't have to buy a macbook or a chrome os to get better lap battery life now you can get better that battery life on windows laptops as well so i guess that's good but uh, that event it's going viral because of a new feature that is exclusive on windows on arm that feature is called recall that this feature will be processed locally microsoft has said but this will save you your uh, activity on windows and you can just go to history and check activity i don't know why this feature exists and who asked for it but this feature is going viral as a potential privacy and security nightmare sure they are saying it's pro- it will be processed locally but it's not So I guess that's that. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you guys very very soon.